Hey heroes, good morning. So fun that I can uh, speak to you today and teach you something. Um, so we're in a series of the Holy Spirit and two weeks ago Selena started and she explained that with Pentecost the Holy Spirit came to earth uh, after Jesus went to heaven and that the Holy Spirit came live in us and that he came to give us strength and to help us and to guide us. And last week Marella continued and she explained about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the gifts that he gives us and it's for wisdom, uh, the power to heal, the power to do miracles and the power to educate people and to learn other people something. So today we're going to learn another aspect of why the Holy Spirit is such an important and necessary in our lives as believers. So the Holy Spirit gives us strength and he guides us but he also helps us then to, to choose the right things and not to do bad things. And one of the things that he does is to create a fruit in us that will display God's character and Jesus' character to people around us. And he creates a fruit in us and this fruit is explained in Galatians uh, 5. So it's a chapter in the uh, New Testament in the Bible, it's a letter of Paul. And he writes there, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So there are a lot of them, it's our nine. But at first I want to talk about why it's talking about fruit. That's maybe you're asking why about fruit, because we're not a tree, we don't grow fruit on ourselves like bananas or orange juice, oranges. So to explain you that, I want to start with a small quiz. So you see this first picture. Can you recognize what kind of tree it is? Do you see the leaves? Maybe you know it. This is a coconut tree. You see here the coconuts. This is a coconut tree. Second one, another tree, not yet fruit. Can we see what kind of tree this is? Do you know it? This is a banana tree. So you may see, when I see the bananas, I understand it's a banana tree. Last one. Now the question, I think this is the hardest, I think this is the hardest. Can you see what kind of tree this is? This is an apple tree. So making the ice the apples, we surely know there's an apple tree. So with all these pictures I tried to show you that by not seeing the fruit, sometimes it's hard to recognize and identify the tree. And that's just like with us. We're also, you can compare us to trees, but it's visible who we are by the fruit of the spirit we bear. So people can recognize us then as believers because of these fruits. So keep that in mind. What were the fruits we were talking about? There were nine. It was, I'm going to uh, explain them now. We got love, we got joy, we got peace, we got patience, we got kindness, uh, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So I start quickly with six of them. Um, and keep in mind that these are also characteristics that often are used to, to write about God. So it's very cool that we can have the same fruit and the same characteristics to show to other people. I think that's awesome. So first six of them quickly. Peace. Peace, I also use the term Shalom. It's Old Testament, but Shalom is the peace that is always there and it is um, that we can encounter peace also when everything around us is busy and, and, and hectic and we don't have to be worried, we don't have to be afraid, but we can always uh, uh, feel God's peace. Nothing is missing. So the patience is a characteristic to endure a lot and to forgive a lot and to wait long and to be patient that we stay calm when we wait. So God's patience of course and his love is forever and we should make sure that our patience is like that. Kindness is to be uh, caring for other people and to be nice to other people and to be interested in other people but some I think most people are good in being kind but the challenge here is to be kind to people that maybe you don't like that much or are not your friends in class so to also be kind to them and to show kindness to all people, that's the real fruit of the Spirit here. Goodness, being good and uh, wanting to do good, not only because uh, if you're not good you get a punishment of your parents or, or 
some people are looking at you, so you're then doing good. No, wanting to do good every time, again and again. And a good Bible verse I always remember in the Bible about God goodness is uh, Psalm 190, verse 68. It says, Lord, you are good and all you do is good. So he is good and he does good. Let's try that too. Faithfulness is to be loyal and when you make a commitment or you make a, a, a promise to someone, you keep that. And you make sure how hard it is or how long it takes, you keep that promise. Like God, His promises are yes and amen and He never disappoints us. So let's try that to do that too. And we've talked about self-control and self-control is to be, uh, when something happens to us, we don't immediately respond to maybe sometimes being anger or I don't know what kind of reaction uh, people could have. but we wait and we stand and we think about okay what what's god's wisdom in a situation and, and what should god think of how i should react in this situation and then to react and respond in that matter then you are experiencing self-control and that's good good property to have so these were six of the nine a bit more quickly um and the three of them i'm going to explain a bit more so the first of them is love and um, I'm picking up something up. Love is agape love, and it is a love that um, is pure dedication to others, and it's a, li a giving love, and it's not a love that you want to take, but you want to give. And God asks him to love him above all, and to love others like ourselves. And uh, God loved us first, that's the way we um, can love other people back. So this is a little craft I will show you, the English one also. Um, Jesus showed, of course, his love first to us, and God showed his love first to us, and the cross is a good example of it. So um, we love because he first loved us. So also this is written down in John 15, verse 13, and it says, uh, the greatest way to show love for friends is to die for them. And that's, I think, a big challenge. Are you willing, are you able, are you thinking about dying for your friends? I think that's a a large love you have to think about that and are you able to yeah grasp that kind of love so another one is the uh, joy and in this case i want to chat, ask you something because i think we can all be joyful huh? if it's something good happens we get an ice cream or we get a good toy of our parents we can be joyful we can be happy we can be happy but what for instance if we got a toy of our parents and we're very happy about it but maybe two three four weeks later we're not interested in it anymore or even worse it gets broken maybe you're probably you're not a bit sad then even and the joy is gone the happiness is gone so that's not the joy that's explained in the bible the joy in the bible is forever it's independent of your situation like paul has, uh, was in prison and he was in a bad situation but still he was able to be joyful and that's the joy based on god and based on the built by the Holy Spirit. And that's the joy we should try to achieve. So being joyful, independent of what happens around us. Then I will come to the last one is gentleness. So gentleness is also in the, the Greek word and translation to the English or Dutch, a difficult word I think uh, Bible translators have to translate because it's a word that entails a lot and the translations are sometimes not feeling completely. So it's Gentleness is about being humble, uh, to always be kind to other people, and um, never hurt other people, uh, being good. But maybe an example is someone who's absolutely not gentle, that's this guy. I think you know him all, this is the Hulk, and that's a good example of somebody absolutely not being gentle, because when he gets angry, he just explodes into a big green monster and smashes everything. That's absolutely not gentle. So keep that in mind as the opposite. So gentleness is also not a weak thing. Some people think it's a weak thing. No, it's not a weak thing. It's a strong thing. It's, it's being able to, to stop anger of other people by being gentle. So another example of this is when you have oobleck. And oobleck is a liquid or a kind of fluid. That it's fluid and it moves gently when I'm being gentle. And I can move it the way I want it to be if I'm being gentle with it. But it's not always um, this fluid. If you're not being gentle, 
it's becoming hard again. So if you, for instance, smack on it with a hammer, it thickens and it hardens. And if I, for instance, have a marble and it's in there, I have to be gentle to get it out. If I'm being tough, it becomes hard and it, I don't get it. So I have to be very gentle and, and softly to get it out. Of course, my hands will become very sticky at the moment. But then I get the marble out of there and this marble and getting this marble from the black is an example of being gentle and if I'm not gentle I'm not getting what I want and it's not happening. And so about gentleness I think it's also important to understand that Jesus on the Mount, Sermon of the Mount uh, also in the beginning says that um, gentle people will inherit the entire earth. So it's a very important thing to be gentle as uh, so keep that in mind. So these are next. Wait. Regarding the Zublek, I got a short clip from you because uh, people are doing crazy things with this, even filling entire swimming pools. So watch this clip to see something crazy with the Zublek. And yeah, take a look. So, this oobleck you can make yourself, I will explain it later on and even after you have used the oobleck you can create a little stress ball with it, so that's fun to do. I will explain it after when I've finished explaining the fruit of the spirit. So, putting this one away for a sec, so today I, we learned hopefully that the Holy Spirit creates fruit in us, in our lives as believers. And this fruit helps us to not make the wrong choices, but to live a life just like Jesus. And everyone is strong in some of these fruits and weak in the others. So that's why we always need to spend time with God and ask Him to grow all this fruit in us and to make sure that they are reflected and we can all wear it and make the character shown well of all these parts of the fruit. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your goodness, your greatness, your uh, biggest example you gave us to bear and to wear this fruit in our lives, Lord. Thank you that we are being able to ask you to, to enlarge these fruits in our life, these this parts of the fruit, Lord, and that it may grow in us and such as the same way we can become better builders of your kingdom on earth, that your will may become. Thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, thanks for listening. I thought this was very fun. And I hope to see you again, hopefully soon. We'll see what happens. And stay tuned if you want to see quickly about how to create new black and the craft I showed you. So, see you. Bye. So, I promised you to tell you about uh, the craft and the, the experiment I showed you in the clip. So the first one I showed you was the cross with the beautiful colors. So what it actually is, this salt with paint. So what you can do is you can go to the website, you can print uh, the crosses, uh, Dutch and English, and print it on a bit of carton, a bit of thicker paper if that's possible. If not, print it on thin paper, try to stick it on the carton, thick paper, uh, to make it a bit stronger. What you then do is, let's take the English one, um, is to take the glue and to put it alongside the edges of this cross. Try to do it a bit gentle and a bit uh, neat. If that's finished, quickly when it's wet, take salt, throw a lot of salt around it, over it, make sure the salt gets into all the glue. Then you have to wait, wait some minutes, five minutes, that it dries. When it's dry, you can uh, get rid of all the salt like that. The salt will stick on the glue. And if it's hard enough, make sure it's hard enough. Then you can take your water paint and make sure you use enough water so it's uh, thin enough. And what you can then do is to use the color paints, different colors, to put it on the salt. And you do it gentle. You see the water dispersed around the salt and you get the colors that flu that yeah, go into each other <laughs> um, 
And then you get a, when you let it dry, the colors become even more pretty when it's dry. So that's the first I wanted to show you. The second one was the black I showed you during the clip. So how do you make the black? It's actually quite simple. You take uh, water and you take corn flour. And make sure that you have enough corn flour, that you have twice as much corn flour as you use water. So check that first. When you know that, put the water in a um, bag <laughs> and gently uh, take a little bit of corn flour, put it in there, uh, scoop by scoop, and use a spoon to stir it. Um, at some moment you will feel that steering becomes harder and reach the moment that it is still liquid so you can still pour it like this but the moment that you hit on it it's hard so that's what you should try to achieve for then you can play with it, you can make a ball with it, you can sponge it, I don't know, try things with it which you happen, you squeeze it uh, make sure you don't uh, spoil or you, you keep the things clean that should be clean after you finish playing with it, um, you can make a little stress ball of it. Um, add some water to make it a bit thinner then. Blow up a balloon, pour it in, uh, and you can draw a little face on it, and then you have a little bit of ball to play with. Uh, so that's fine too, so you can make use of this afterwards. So that was what I want to explain to you. Thanks and goodbye.